to be human or to be real. What does it really mean? There was an old, old woman who lived in a ramshackle house at the edge of town. But one day, a thief came by because he'd heard that she was somewhat of a miser and might have a stash of wealth hidden. But just as he was about to climb in her window, he heard her moaning and groaning in her sleep. Dib dib, you dreadful dib dib, leave me, go away from me, you're driving me mad. And then he heard her tossing and turning and moaning and groaning. And he suddenly thought to himself, oh, this dib dib, it must be some kind of terrible disease, and I've been breathing the air that she's been breathing. I must have caught the dib dib. So very hastily, he clambered down from the window and teetered, tottered back to his house, staggered in the wind, the, the door of his house to his wife, almost incoherent, and saying, The dib dib's got me. I'm dying. I'm going to die. But she didn't know what to do because he didn't have any injuries and she couldn't see any rash on him. But she laid him down on the bed and, and wondered whether she, could, she would call a phys physician or whether she should call a priest because he really was dying. But then she had a thought. Um, there was a man in town who was said to be somewhat of a, you know, a, a, a shaman, a sage, uh, said to be a knowledgeable, wise man. So she decided that this is what she would do. So she called this um, being to her house and uh, of course the, the thief uh, kind of knew of him and didn't like him very much but, but he tried to send him away. Go away, I'm dying, the dib dib has got me. But the, 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 the shaman-like man managed to coerce out of the thief what had happened, uh, how he'd gone to the old woman's house, and he tried to, to reassure the thief that he would take care of it. He would see what he could do about it with the powers that he had attained after his many years of contemplation, etc. So, uh, you know, would-be shaman who went off to the old woman's house and he too was about to climb in the window when he too heard the old woman <coughs> moaning and groaning in her sleep and shouting, you dib dib, you're going to be the death of me and go and leave me alone. As he was listening to this, and he also heard her tossing and turning and moaning and groaning, what seemed to be a great deal of pain, he too began to think to himself, Oh, the dib dibs got me also. And he began to shake and tremble so much that the window rattled so terribly that it woke up the old woman and when she woke up and jumped out of her bed she said to this man who she could see by the light of the moon what what are you doing here you're said to be a good and pious and chaste man what are you doing in an old woman's house but but this man being of the ilk that he was and gathered himself together and said, I heard about your dib-dib, so I came to 
take care of it for you, but now I feel I've got this terrible dib-dib myself. <laughs> there he was, shaking and trembling and sweating. And uh, she looked at him with some scorn and she said, Why, you foolish man, I thought you were a man of intelligence and insight and but uh, uh, look over yonder, there is a terrible dip dip. So as he looked, and all was quiet for a moment, he heard it, dip, 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 <laughs> the tap dripping in the basin in the wood. Well, of course, the, the, the would-be shaman, being of the kind that he was, he'd drawn himself together and he muttered something to the old woman uh, and immediately took his leave. Uh, but then he hastened back to the thief where the thief was lying in his bed waiting for death to descend upon him and when he arrived the thief said, what are you doing here just coming to see my last suffering? And, of course, the would-be shaman said, No, my dear man, don't you realize that I was working on your behalf to see what this dib-dib was all about? And I come to you with a cure for your ailment. So he ordered uh, uh, the woman who had perked up hearing the cure for the ailment to bring a glass of water. So she bought a glass of water and he waved his hands over the water and muttered a few incantations, made the thief promise that he would not steal again and had him drink the water to be, of course, instantly cured. <laughs> now, of course, at the end of the story, goes that because the thief didn't really like the man very much, he didn't steal anymore, but he also didn't tell the story abroad. And of course, the would-be shaman himself, he kept his mouth shut totally about what the real story was. But as for the old woman, she was a bit of a gossip herself, <laughs> but she kept her peace, not telling the story to anyone but you and I to make of it what we will. So as an ingredient in our pot as we explore what it's like to be human or what it means to be human or to be real what does this story bring up for us? What's your take on this story? To be human. To be real. How would you interpret? Or what is it that comes to your awareness about this story? Well, we're all caught up in our world of illusion. Yes, because we have to bring it back to where we are now, in this place that's purported to be a place where we no longer need to try. So what are the qualities about this place? This is our exploration.
be human enough to be real. <coughs> what we're realizing about this place that rings true relative to this story. Mm -hmm. power of the, the power of the mind, yes. And discernment. And discernment, also, yeah. absolutely. It's how we can get caught up in. Yes, other people. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The plague. The plague. Yeah. Yes. Like the difference between subjectivity and objectivity. Yes. So doesn't it bring us back to this place? where we have to begin to recognize what it is that's present for us in this state of not trying, not needing to be. And what happens when it comes to interpreting stories? Where are we at with that now? When you hear someone's story, what happens? What happens when you hear someone's story now? But not within such. Yes. So it's connecting with the person. Absolutely. Isn't that different from where we were before, where we bounced it off our conditioning, interpreted that story according to our own experiences and conditioning? Do we do that anymore in this place? Or do we just take in the story and allow the response to come out according to the oneness, the embracing it? So isn't this confirming what it is that's there for us in this state of, as we said, not trying, not needing to impose? Does that mean not interpret? Mm. Oh, it's still interpret. You know, what, like, it's not like we're not trying. I like for myself, I just see that, that by by not getting caught up in that, there's there's a clarity, deep clarity right. in myself and what's going on. And it doesn't necessarily mean that there's not also my own emotion in there. Yes. But um, you know, but it's being aware that that's what's going on. <laughs> 